All right, guys. This is Mr. Bruins here, and today we're gonna be doing our watercolor techniques. This is all gonna be based in the style of our featured artist named Keith Herring. Let's get our pages set up first before we can do anything else. So what we need first is we're gonna get our pages uh, organized. So we're gonna get some masking tape and we're gonna tape our pages down. All right, page is set, good. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to get my shapes drawn on. So we are going to do our shapes on here in the style of Keith Haring. All right, so up on the board, we will put some Keith Haring shapes for y'all. Um, and we're gonna do this in pencil. Draw really light. Okay, so watercolor uh, can work with pencil really well. Um, some people like to see the pencil through the watercolor, some people don't. Uh, with Keith Haring, we have the option to outline stuff at the end. So we're gonna start with just some Keith Haring style drawings. You want five big Keith Haring style drawings on your page, okay? So we're gonna add in seven um, smaller shapes. And these are gonna be just different kind of shapes that Keith Haring would use in his backgrounds or like accent type of shapes. All right, so after we have all of our stuff drawn out, we are going to start on our techniques. Before we can start on techniques though, I wanna go over a few watercolor basics. So you have your water. Some of us, it's been a while since we've done watercolor. So we have our water, okay? And we have our brushes, okay? Have our brushes, okay? A few things that I like to have on hand is we have a few things that we like. We like, oh, we have of course our paint, okay? I like to have paper towel, okay, just in case. And then we also have these cloths that we can use as well. Okay, and I'll keep that kind of right handy up, right in front of my paper right here. Okay, and those you can use to kind of like dab your brush on as needed, all right? But you can also use the paper towel, squeeze your paint dry and all that good stuff, okay? All right, so when you're putting your brush in the water, so there's a side on my, in my buckets, there's a side with ridges on it, a side that has like a clunky part on there that's like to hold your brushes out like that. Okay, we're not really gonna use that. But when you're putting your brush in, you can kind of mash it a little bit at the bottom to clean it. And then don't tap it on the side, that'll just get water on uh, all over the place. Just scrape it a few times on the edge and you'll notice how the water just kind of runs down the side. And that's gonna be how we clean our brushes off. So scrape it a few times on the edge, that'll clean it off. All right. Another important thing to know, when you're getting paint on your brush, we're not just gonna like mash our brush into the paint, all right, into these sets. You're gonna more or less spin your brush in, okay? Kind of twist your brush. See, I'm like moving it around in my fingers, like rolling it. That's how you're gonna do this. All right, so we're gonna roll our brush. All right, so what I'm gonna do is roll my brush in, and then I'm actually, everyone has these trays on their table. You're actually gonna put your paint onto these trays before we put it onto our paper. This is gonna allow us to blend our colors and make a new color before we put it onto our paper, okay? So instead of just going from the tray to the page, we're gonna go from the tray, the paint tray, to the clear tray, or whatever color yours is, to your paper to make a brand new mixed color, all right? We're not in elementary school anymore. We're not in intermediate school anymore. I want you guys to elevate your colors, all right? To elevate what you're doing from here, 
bring it here, make something new, bring it here. Okay, we're color mixing. All right, so let's get started. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with a very basic technique, and this is called a wash. A wash is when you get paint on your brush and you fill an area with color. Okay, it's the most basic technique there is. So it's a wash. So I'm gonna get my color. So I'm gonna get water on my brush. I'm gonna scrape it a few times on the side. I'm gonna do mine with this blue right here. I'm gonna get some blue on my brush. I'm gonna spin the blue in. And these are, I have a brand new set. Um, if your set is has been used throughout the day or you're using, it's not the first day, and you're using a set that has been used throughout the day or has been used already, make sure that and your and your paints are are, are, um, are kind of soft, then you're not gonna use as much water as I'm using right now. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna add some, what other color should I add? I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of red to this blue. Make sure your brush is clean in between. So get some water on it, scrape it in between. Tiny bit of red, add it into that blue. That way it's not straight out of the, we're not going straight out of the set blue. Straight out of the set purple, I guess, right? All right, so we got some kind of purple action going on here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this water, I'm gonna spin it into my brush, taking a lot of that water, and I'm gonna go over just a little bit of my section. I'm probably only gonna go over about that much of it. All right, so I'm gonna go over it. About here. Okay. We also can call this wet on dry. So that, that means wet paint on a dry page. Wet paint on a dry page. When you're doing this, either go up and down or side to side, but I wouldn't go both. All right. So after you do this, I'm actually gonna do, I'm actually gonna dip my brush in the water. Okay, so I'm gonna dip my brush in the water. I'm gonna scrape it once on the side and I'm gonna go right back into it. So keeping some of that water on, or so keeping some of that paint on my brush. So it's still blue. Okay. I, I, le I left a little bit of space so they don't bleed together. And I'm gonna do it one more time. Dip, scrape, leave space, paint. So this shows you that when you want to have a little bit of a lighter area, all using that same color that you blended. You can just add a little bit more water when you're doing that wash and you can lighten it up. Okay, and then we're gonna clean off our brush. Let's go to the bottom, scrape it a few times on the side and then you can pat it dry. Or if you have a regular paper towel, you can squeeze it dry. Okay, all right. So the next technique is called blooms. All right, so blooms is when you wash an area with color, and then after you wash the area with color, you are going to wait a certain amount of time and then you're going to fill that area, or you're gonna to touch that area with clean water, all right? It's a very time sensitive process. If you don't wait long enough, it doesn't work. If you wait too long, it doesn't work either. You have to wait the perfect amount of time. So, I'm gonna show you guys a trick when we are doing this process, all right? I'm gonna do mine in this area right here with purple. So I'm gonna get some water on my brush. I'm gonna add a little water here. Get some purple on here. Add some purple in. 
It's the first time using this purple, so let's put in my brush. Purple, purple, purple. And I want that to be a little bit darker of a purple, so I'm actually gonna get a tiny touch of black. I usually don't use a lot of black. So I'm gonna get a lot. Get some black on there. Okay. A little more of my color to mix in. Okay, so I got my purple. So this one I'm gonna get the color of my brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and go, I'm gonna wash the area, and then I'm gonna immediately go ahead and start cleaning my brush in the water, basically right after I get started or finish washing. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and wash. Okay, fill that area with color. Make sure it's looking shiny. That's how you know that it's not too dry. All right, so now you uh, have to wait, right? So how long do you wait? About how long it would take to sing happy birthday. So happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. While you're doing this, make sure you're cleaning your brush. Happy birthday to you. Okay, so I'm cleaning my brush out that entire time. I'm gonna get my brush, it's dripping with water. You don't have to do it so it's like completely soaked. I'm gonna take it so it's not like 100% dripping. I'm gonna just touch it to the page. Touch it to the page. I'm only gonna do two blooms and what you're seeing here is that it is actually pushing the paint away. So watercolor paper is made out of cotton, all right? And so what this is doing is it's actually absorbing into the page, it's staining the page, right? So when it's staining the page, it's right, it's absorbing. So when you push, put that clean water on top of this um, bloom, this washed area to make the blooms, you're actually pushing away that paint before it has a chance to fully absorb, thus making these blooms. And you'll see once it dries, it leaves a really cool edge on here, or it should. Let's hope it does. Okay, so I'm gonna clean my brush, scrape it a few times on the side, and dab it so it's dry. All right, next technique. This one is called wet on wet. All right, I'm gonna do this one with green. I'm just gonna do this one over here. I'm just moving away so I have more room so I'm not like working like where I'm gonna get my arm in it. Okay, green. Get on my tray. I'm, I'm picking mine up. Yours, you're gonna have more room on your table. I've got limited space, so don't think you have to pick yours up, all right? All right, so we got green. Green in my tray is a little bit different than yours, probably. Mine's like almost like this weird teal. Which is kinda cool. I'm gonna add some yellow into it. Make a little more of a true green. Add some more yellow. So wet on wet, you actually need clean water. So wet on wet, you need clean water. So I'm gonna get some clean water for this. So with wet on wet, sometimes we call this the tie-dye technique. What you're gonna do, is you're actually gonna get clean water and you are going to wash the area that you are gonna paint just with clean water first. Okay, so I'm loading my brush up with water and you want a good amount of water on your brush, okay? A lot, a lot, a lot. Like I'm having like a, it's like a puddle of water basically. Like I didn't even scrape it on the side for this. Clean water on my brush. Okay, keep going, add more water, and it back to that section. It is just like standing on my page, like a big old puddle. Okay, puddle 
one page. Okay, so that area is just like filled with clean water. It's hard to tell. Um, might look shiny on the camera. I'm hoping it's, it looks a little shiny so you guys can see that it's full of water. Okay, so after that, you're gonna take your color and you're just gonna touch it to the area. So I'm gonna get my color back on my brush now. I'm just gonna touch it in and it should just move around. Boom. So I'm just like touching it to the area and it'll just kind of like, it'll start to like flood around. You can even blow on it. It's not as limey as I wanted it to be. I'm gonna add a little bit more of that green. Add a little bit more of that green into it. And since this is a wet on wet technique, whoa, there we go. Actually, you can just add more colors in. So since this is wet on wet, I can use colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. And those will look good together. Uh, with, with watercolor, be really careful to use colors that are complementary because they will turn to brown. So if I'm using green and this yellow that I thought was gonna be more of a lime green um, is there. I could also use, throw in some orange or I could take some of this blue that I have on here and I can throw that in too. I can leave in some blue. And that'll look really cool. All right, and I'm gonna let that just kind of sit there for a little bit. All right, and so this is kind of a tie-dye technique. So as I'm adding in those colors, this is another technique that we call charging. So I'm charging that area with color, all right? I could have told you back here when I was doing the blooms that I was charging that area with clean water. So that's just another watercolor um, technical term, right? So charging, so this was wet on wet, and I charged those areas with color. That was blooms, and I charged those areas with water. And then this one was wash, and then also wet on dry, since it was wet paint on a dry page. All right, so I'm cleaning my brush off. I'm gonna go to a new section. I'm gonna use an orange color in this section here and we're gonna do some lifting. All right, so lifting is as close as you can get to erasing with watercolor. There's not anything you can do that's closer, all right? You can do this with the microfiber cloths. Uh, these uh, absorb really, really well. Or you can do this with paper towel, all right? It's your choice what you would like to do these with. Um, I like to do both. I think that there's an advantage to having both. So I will show you both. All right, so I've got both things close. All right, so let's do some orange. Get my brush. Okay, so I've got some clean water. Let's get some orange. All right, move that in. Here's some orange on my brush. Some more water in there. Fill that with some orange. Um, I'm gonna add a little red in there too. Got like a little red orange going on. Ooh, feels good, nice and. Let's get some more. There's orange in there. Just, just some blood orange color going on. All right, I'm not gonna waste too much time getting color on my brush. All right, so we got orange. I'm gonna spin my brush in it. Uh, this is an immediate technique. Okay, so you wanna have a paper towel ready before you even start this. Um, so again, watercolor paper is made of cotton and it is, it is absorbing the color. It is staining the paper, right? So the faster you get to it, the less time it has to stain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, paint my area and I'm going to immediately press and lift, okay? See, press, lift, it's gone, right? Press, lift, gone. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up here where I know I'm gonna have the most detail. Really, really saturated color. It's because of how I'm holding my brush. The higher up I'm holding my brush, that more I'm letting that water come out. 
Okay, so I'm gonna try to paint this relatively quickly. Um, if I go out of the lines, it's okay. This is all practice technique sheet. I'm not super worried if this is not 100% perfect. I'm pulling some more of that color down. Get down there. Go to the feet. Set my brush down. I'm just gonna press and lift, right? Paper towel style, press, lift. All right, so there's like some erasing right there. So then here's what the microfiber will do. I'm gonna try to get like just a little area of it. Press and lift. All right, so you can see this absorbs a lot, I think. And then if you want, you can even like press and lift with just smaller areas. I'm gonna leave some of that orange on there though, for sure. And then the third option, if you wanted, you take your brush, squeeze it dry. All right? And you could even take it, use your brush to absorb some of that. All right, you could even absorb some of it with your brush. Okay, that's another option. All right, so that is lifting. Um, interesting seeing what this is doing right here. Not super excited about this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take my paper towel. I like to do this thing where I twist it up like this. I'm just gonna absorb some of that color. Just, it just sucks it up. Watercolor vacuum. Okay, it'll be this little light, wet on wet. Okay, all right, so that was lifting. All right, so we got one more big figure here. And we're gonna do this one with some red. And this is going to be our layered glaze, okay? So with our layered glaze or our layered wash, whatever you'd like to refer to it as, um, this one we're actually gonna come back to a few times. So we're actually gonna paint the entire thing. It's just gonna look like a wash at first, just like this one section. So it's kind of the opposite of this. It's almost going from, we're gonna go from light to dark. Let me show you how this works. So we're gonna get our clean brush. Okay. I'm gonna get some red on my brush. Some red. Add a little, add a little water to it. Okay, and I want to get a good amount of color on here because I'm going to come back to the same color and I don't want to have to remake it. Um, what do I want to add? Let's add a little, uh, maybe a little, like, whatever this is. It's like, it's kind of like a pink, magenta kind of color. Let's add some of that. Whatever that is, let's add it. It still went more red than anything. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna add a tiny touch more water. So I'm adding more like volume to it. Okay, so I got my red. Got it on my brush, got enough for a few layers. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint my dog. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry completely before we come back to it. All right, it shouldn't take too long. Um, just be mindful that you don't smudge it when we're working on something else. All right, we got a few other things. So again, that's layered glaze or a layered wash. And we're gonna come back to that in a second. Okay, so this next one, this one is gonna be using salt. This one's always a favorite. People love this one. Um, I'm not gonna use the whole container because takes a lot to use so I already poured a little bit in this little container here um, this is one of those techniques where a little bit goes a long way you don't need a lot of salt um, if you don't know 
when you add salt onto water, it absorbs it, all right? It sucks it up, right? So it makes a really neat technique. Um, and you don't need a lot to make that technique happen, to achieve that technique, right? So make sure that you already have the salt uh, ready to go before you get started with it. All right, so we've already done red or jello, green, blue, purple. So let's do something different. Um, I'm gonna use it in my, let's go in like the light bulb over here and I'm gonna make like a navy kind of color. So I'm gonna go like some blue and black. All right. It's gonna be kind of difficult. A true navy is almost like hard to tell that it's even blue, right? So I've got a lot of blue in there. Put some water. amount of black but this looks really good with dark colors I love doing this with like cool colors um, and I really like doing sometimes I like doing this with uh, just black or purple um, but doing this with just black is always really cool um, a lot of these sets um, the black is almost never just black it always is like some kind of tint of something else and the salt sometimes has a really neat reaction with um, whatever that extra color is. And I've, I've seen some really neat results over the years. Okay, so I'm gonna do this in my light bulb. Um, so I'm gonna wash this area and you don't wanna do, um, you don't want a ton of water on your brush. I'm gonna scrape it a few extra times on the side of my bucket. And usually when, so we're holding our brush kind of at like a 45 degree angle, kind of like that while we've been, while we've been working. And you don't wanna hold it exactly up. You don't wanna hold it at the 45. You almost wanna hold it like almost parallel to your page when you're doing this. Um, I like to call this like a flatter wash. This keeps it a little bit smoother when you're working with this. Um, it keeps it, um, from getting too flooded. So I'm gonna do, a, it's gonna kind of in between 45 and flat whenever I'm doing this, so that way it's not too, too wet. So I get the paint on my brush, my navy. We'll see how this looks, I'm excited about this. Okay, I'm gonna hold my brush a little bit higher. I think it's a little bit easier to work with. And you can paint on this masking tape right onto your page. So let's try that, so should you go? Oh yeah, that looks nice. Look at that, you don't get navy in a, in a watercolor set, you have to make that. All right, if you wait too long for this one, this will not work. It is a time sensitive process. So you wash the area and immediately put some salt on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it, take a tiny pinch. I'm gonna sprinkle that into the area, okay? Some people get really excited and they want to put a lot of salt on it. Don't do it. Don't put too much salt. If you do, it's like this. I'm already worried about this down here because it could clump together. It'll look bad. Like, and okay, I'm already worried. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens because um, it could just clump like that and dry and it just will look bad whenever it's done. Um, but if you have it like these ones over here are probably gonna look super cool. It'll take it, absorb it, and it has like a really cool like electric look to it. So I'm pretty excited, we'll see. Okay, so that is salt. The next one is wax resist, all right? Wax or wax resist. So what we're gonna do now is I'm going to grab a crayon. All right, so everyone needs to use a crayon. So if you've not done this before, the wax will repel the water. It will resist the water, hence the name wax resist. Let's make some blue and green together. Yeah, make like a tealy kind of color. And we'll go like over here. Yeah, let's try that out. So if I'm gonna do that, I will go with like a, let's go with like an orangey color. I always like orange. All right, so orange crayon. So I got myself an orange. Um, I always just do something that is something simple. Um, in the spirit of Keith Haring, I'm just gonna draw something that is already like in his style. So like a heart, a circle, an X, um, a zigzag, um, 
a shape, like something that is super simple that um, he would do. So I'm gonna just kind of, I'm gonna press really hard. I'm gonna do my X that's on there already. Boom. So I got my crayon X done. <sighs> okay, <sighs> all right, so there we go. So I got that. Um, I'm gonna make my teal, so I got my water cleaned out. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get my thing. I'm gonna get some water on my palette. Ooh, all right, let's get some blue. Put some blue in there. I didn't, I need to spin more blue. Spin more blue in there. There we go. Okay. Get some green. It's like limey green that I've got in there. It looks really neat. I've never used that. It's an interesting watercolor set. This should make some cool colors. All right, a little more blue. So I'm gonna put it down. I'm gonna hold it down like a uh, very, very, uh, flat like this, and I'm gonna go right over it. If you notice, like, even if I charge around it, that crayon should, boom. Like, see, if I, I could just, the water just sits right on top. Boom, boom, pretty cool. Okay, so I got myself my wax resist area. All right, so we, it looks like our, our dog is dry enough to go back in and do another layer. So, or whichever section you did, not if you're using a dog, that's fine. You can do whichever section you want. Um, I'll dry that brush real quick. I'm gonna get some more of my red on my brush and then I'm gonna go back in. Uh, so I'm, that's gonna be my last area that I do. So I'm gonna go, I wanna leave some of this already, this right here done, right here. So I'm gonna start about here. That, yep, go all the way down. Go all the way to the end. Yep, I'll go all the way to the edge, like that. Boop, 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 done. All right, so after that, that's easy. That was fast. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry now. All right, clean my brush. All right, after I'm gonna let that dry, there's only a few more. So this one is a fan favorite. This one is a splatter technique, okay? So people love the splatter technique. You have to be really careful with this one because it can be very messy, all right? It can be very, very messy. Um, I always am careful because I don't want it to get on any of my other work. And I especially don't want it to get on any of the work of people around me, okay? So I'm always very hesitant about this. So when I do this, there's a few different ways you can do this. And there's one way that you really should not do it, okay? The one way that you don't do it, okay, I'm gonna tell you this right now. The way that you don't do it is we are not at Hogwarts, so we are not casting spells, all right? So we're not flinging our brush all around. All right, that is the way not to do that technique. Uh, what you can do is you can take the brush instead of like this, you hold it upright, okay? After you already have paint on it, put it in your other hand, you hold it close to your paper, take your index finger, grab the bristles, you bring them towards you and you gently flick down close to your paper around and that will give you a splatter technique, okay? That's one way to do it. Another way to do this is using these other tools, using a brush and a screen, like a toothbrush and a screen. So you get the paint on your brush, and then you go over here and you'll gently flick over. Oh, you can kind of see a little like eraser looking type deal. Um, you'll gently flick over the screen and you will get more splatter technique, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take a little bit of paper and I'm gonna put my, um, I'm gonna put the paper around the areas that I want to stay dry. 
So I'm gonna put those over here and I'm gonna put the paper over here. Okay, that's pretty good. And then it's pretty dry on my TV still. So I'm gonna put it, uh, there we go, okay, like that. That should be pretty good. That should keep it relatively in that little heart area, okay? So for this color, let's do some pink. People always wanna know how to make pink. Pink is literally just red with lots of water. This set actually has pink in it, but I'm not gonna do that, I'm not gonna cheat. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get just a bunch of water. I'm gonna put it on my, my palette right there. All right, a bunch of water on my palette right here. I'm gonna get some just straight red and put it right into it. Okay, and that's pink. So I just paint on the side, that's pink. All right, that's how you make pink, I promise you. If you're not sure, you can always add more water to it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try the toothbrushing, toothbrush technique. I'm gonna put a little bit of that water on my toothbrush and go over it. Get myself some pink splatters going on there. Again, if you want to clean it up a little bit, you can always take this and try to lighten some stuff up with some lifting, okay, you just gotta get to it pretty quick, right? Okay, if you want it darker, you can add more red to it, or you can go back in with the other technique of, with your brush, Let's see if I got enough on my brush. Just a little bit, not a lot, all right. So that's a way to do a splatter, okay? You might end up getting some pink finger, some red finger, some green finger or blue finger. It's okay, it's not permanent, it's washable, you'll be all right. All right, so that is a splatter technique, okay? You have a few extra spaces in here, all right? With those extra spaces, you can practice a few of these other techniques that you may have had some trouble with, okay? Maybe some of your techniques didn't work exactly how you thought they were gonna work. Maybe you didn't get blooms, okay? Maybe your wet on wet didn't go exactly like you thought it was gonna go. That's okay. Try it out in one of these other techniques uh, spots. So like for me, I'm gonna go ahead and do another wet on wet space. Maybe that'll look a little bit better later. Yeah, try out something that may not have worked exactly like you thought it was going to. All right, I want you to do that in your remaining techniques, okay? I'm gonna do that on mine for until this one's done. And when that one's finished, I'm gonna come back to you, okay? Go ahead and put on that last layer of our layered glaze. And then we're gonna dry this up and move on to our last step. There we go. There's that red. Go over this last layer right here. All right, so what the whole point of this layered glaze right here is to show you that the, if you don't like a color, it's too light like this. Initially, you can go over it one more time, two more times, and that will darken that color up for you, okay? It's like the opposite of what we did here with this wash, where you can wash the area, add water, 
rewash the area with more water into it, add more water, wash the area, add more water. I'm gonna throw this into fast forward real quick. I'm gonna dry this and then I'm gonna come back to you real quick with the next steps. All right, so last thing to do is to really make it look like something Keith Haring would do. So I'm gonna take some thick Sharpie and I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna outline all my stuff and then I'm gonna add in some little extra details in the back to really make it look like something that Keith Haring would have made and that's it. And so this is just putting the finishing touches on it. Um, again, quick review for everything that we did. We did our wash slash wet on dry. We did our blooms. This one is also blooms, okay? Which was also charging with clean water. We did wet on wet with charging with color. This one I also did wet on wet charging with color. Lifting, okay? We lifted with the microfiber and with the paper towel. We did our layered wash, okay, or a layered glaze with three layers, but this one, when I dried it, it ended up looking like two. Um, salt, let your salt dry. Don't use a hair dryer on salt, okay? It doesn't have the same effect. All right, does it a little bit, but not as much. Okay, next thing, wax resist with the crayon. Looks great. Um, and then splatter technique, okay? So those are our splatter techniques. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, my Keith Haring style to it. And that is it, I hope you guys enjoyed. Take your time on this. Watercolor is a time sensitive process. Um, don't rush it. That's my biggest thing I can, I can give you guys. Um, if I can give you any advice at all, just do not rush the process, okay? All right, I'll see you guys next time, later.